just landed in Vegas. I don't know if you guys could see that behind me. It's kind of a slow weekend in Vegas, at least in the poker world, it seems. A lot of people are on that cruise ship. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, that's fine. But uh, yeah, there's just not a whole lot of major events going on this weekend in Vegas. So I'm not sure how much action we'll be able to find. I'm just gonna head over to the win and see if we can jump into some fun games there. Most likely it'll be like 510, maybe 510, 20. We'll see how that goes. Next vlog though, should be from a 50, 100 game that I'll be playing at Aria. That one is private. I managed to get invited, so looking forward to that. Never played it before. But for today, we're just gonna head to the win and play uh, something a little more reasonable, you know? Should be around like a $5,000 buy-in or so. Still no small chunk of change, but either way, the results probably won't be too crazy. If you guys are more into these sort of stakes, you know, a little more relatable, if you will, then uh, this video is for you. So with that said, let's head to the strip and see how it goes. Right, guys here we are back in las vegas playing at the win in a 5 10 20 game buying for this game is a 3000 max so that's what i'm in for to start in the first interesting hand there's an early position open to 60. a guy in late position calls and i look down at ace jack in the small blind decide to raise it up to 300 trying to capitalize on the late position caller probably not having the best hand and also not loving just a call from the small blind with a hand like ace jack both of the players make the call, however, so we go three ways to a flop of king, queen, nine with two diamonds. Not much going on for me, but there are two big cards out there which I could represent as the pre-flop re-raiser, and I've got a straight draw, so I bet 270. Early position player calls, keep in mind he's the guy who originally opened. The guy behind him folds, so we go heads up to the turn, which is the jack of diamonds. Not the best card. Sure, we improved to a pair, but flushes and straights get there and not only that but we were behind many other hands on the flop anyway so i decide to check see what he wants to do and what he does is jam all in for his remaining eight or nine hundred dollars not much decision for me i let this one go that moves us to hand number two early position opens to 70 there's a caller in middle position and i look down at pocket nines on the button since i am on the button i think just calling is totally okay that's what i do and the big blind and straddler make the call as well so we go five ways to a flop which has me wishing that i'd re-raised pre it's queen nine deuce with two diamonds so we flop middle set on a draw heavy board checks to early position who bets 120 dollars I decide to just call here on the button. Raising, of course, makes sense since we've got three of a kind, but there are plenty of guys in the pot still who might put in a check raise, and I'm not too worried about protecting a hand this strong. So I decide to keep it chill and just call. The big blind calls as well, and now this straddler check raises to $440. Unfortunately, the early position player who bet 120 on the flop, he folds, but when it gets back to me, I am going nowhere just yet. The question is, do we wanna just call or put in a back raise? I don't really like back raises. I think they just look super strong and they're tough to do with bluffs. So if you can't do it with a bluff, probably shouldn't do it with a value hand. At least that's my school of thinking. But that said, he's only got $800 behind. And the pot's already over like 2200 bucks. He's put in a good amount of his chips. So I decide to just get it over with and jam all in. The big blind gets out of the way. And much to my horror, the guy who check raised to 440 also gets out of the way. So we miss out on some potential value there. Could have probably played this one better. But then again, if they would have made a flush or straight later on, I guess we protected against that. I don't know, silver lining or whatever. In the third hand, there's an early position open to $70, and I am next to act with Ace-9 offsuit. Not really strong enough to call, probably folding this one most of the time, occasionally getting spicy. This one, we add the spice. We make it $240. Big blind cold calls the 240, and then the early position razor also makes the call. So we're going to go three ways to a flop on which I hit nothing. 
Jack 5-3 Rainbow. Not much going on for me, but there shouldn't be a whole lot going on for my opponents either. It's a pretty dry board. It's a re-raised pot. At most, these guys probably have top pair, but even a hand like top pair isn't the most fun to play out of position versus multiple streets of aggression. So I'm going to start right away. It checks to me. I put in $300 trying to thin the field or maybe just take it down right here, but that's not what happens. In fact, they both make the call. So I'm probably shutting this one down until we hit top pair on the turn. That's another good thing that can happen, which I didn't really expect. Ace of hearts checks to me again, and this time I decide to check it back. Not really expecting to get called by worse with multiple opponents here, at least not too often, and we could bluff catch on the river. So I check it back. If I'm being honest, I was also maybe a little concerned that these guys could have a stronger ace high that floats the flop or something. But anyway, river comes the five of spades pairing the board. Looks like a clean run out for a top pair. Big blind checks a third time. Now early position puts in a bet of 1100. No point in raising, I think. Folding would be ridiculous, so I just call big blind player luckily does not put in the dreaded check raise from behind instead he just folds and my opponent on the right who bet 1100 says you're good so i just turn it over don't really want to make people show the losing hand and uh, yeah we win this one nearly 4,000 headed our way in the fourth hand i open jack six suited in late position i missed filming the pre-flop action so bear with me here guy on my left he's on the button he re-raises i'm probably just gonna let this one go but then both of the blinds cold call so i come along as well still not recommended but that's just what happened so we go four ways to a flop which comes down four five seven with one diamond action checks to me and this shouldn't really favor the pre-flop re-raiser too often so i decide to lead out not something you see every day but i think it makes sense sometimes we've got a straight draw backdoor flush draw and could represent some strong stuff on this board as played pre-flop so i put in a bet of 200 bucks guy on my left folds but the big blind makes the call so we're going heads up to the turn which is a brick it's the three of clubs he checks again actions on me and I decide to continue betting $320 this time. Don't want to go too big because I'm trying to set up another bluff on the river and my opponent doesn't have that many chips. This guy does not seem like he was taking poker too seriously, but I think if he misses whatever draw he might have or weak hand, we could win on the river. And if he had something really strong, he probably would have check raised on the flop. So I'm liking where this is going. River's interesting though. It brings in the potential flush with the seven of hearts, but it does give me a straight. However, it introduces Jack-10 as a straight as well. Any other six is also a straight. And of course, if my man has two hearts, we are losing to that hand as well. So I'm wondering whether or not we're going to bet if he checks. Most likely, yes, but we'll never get the chance because he now leads all in. Tricky spot now with a straight. It's really just a bluff catcher. But in the end, I can't really think of too many bluffs. I don't think this is the type of guy to invent a creative bluff necessarily. Looks like he's playing just for fun and passing the time. So kind of discounting a bluff. The question is, could he possibly be value betting or value shoving a hand that I beat? Like, I don't know, two pair or really that's all I can think of. And I think the realistic answer is no. So despite the fact that we have a straight, I decide to make a reluctant fold Upon which my opponent says, good fold, and shows me a six, claiming he made a straight. Well, I mean, he did make a straight, but uh, yeah, that means that I folded a chop. Nice hand. I suppose it's only fair for playing a hand like Jack Six. Don't really deserve to win the pot. In the next interesting one, there's an early position open of $50, and I make it $300 in the straddle with Ace King. That is a real hand, unlike Jack Six. My opponent makes the call, and we go heads up to a flop of Queen Six, Deuce, Rainbow. Small bet incoming. I put in 200. My opponent makes the call, and we see the Jack of Hearts on the turn. I think this is a good card to continue bluffing. Checking also has merit. I think either play is actually acceptable. Don't quote me on that, but that's just my gut feeling. I decided to bet small, 330, right around a third the size of the pot. Would be doing this with over pairs, sets, etc., and could mix in some bluffs with a hand like Ace King or perhaps Ace 10 suited. However, my opponent makes the call, which is not the best news. Looking for a good bluff card on the river, which would entail a low card, like a six or deuce, maybe a three. And of course, a heart would be pretty cool since I've got the king of hearts. Could potentially represent a flush. Sure enough, we get one of those cards. It's the three of hearts. 
I was thinking of shutting down and I think in fact checking still it would be okay here but I decided to go for it he could still have hands like Queen 10 suited that are gonna be in an uncomfortable spot might have a hand like Jack 10 suited or ace Jack suited that floats on the flop and turns a pair and all these sorts of holdings even pocket pairs below the Jack they're gonna have a hard time hanging on for a third bet so I put in twelve hundred dollars would also be value betting sets maybe even over pairs with a heart and i'm hoping this guy realizes that but then he jams all in well that's gonna bring an end to this hand i let it go and he flashes the ace of hearts which indicates to me that he was probably bluffing with the best hand maybe something like ace queen with a heart ace jack with a heart i don't really know what i do know is we lose this one which brings us to the next interesting hand and this one late position opens to 60 dollars and then the big blind re-raises to 240 dollars before i look down at king six suited in the straddle now let me just say there's already a raise and a re-raise so folding king six is more than acceptable in fact it's probably encouraged but with that said when I play somewhat smaller games than I normally do, I like to experiment and get a little funky, and I think this is one of those good spots to do it. The king brings removal to some strong hands like pocket kings and ace king, and we are suited in position versus a re-raiser. Being that we're both pretty deep, I think we could put them in some tough spots post-flop, so I decide to go for it. Not recommended, but if nothing else, for your entertainment, so I make it 640 to go. The late position player who raised to 60, he is done with it. He gets out of the way, but the big blind makes the call. This is best case scenario, I suppose. Well, realistically, if they both folded pre-flop, I wouldn't have complained, but this is the next best thing. So we go heads up to a flop in position of 10, 10, 8 with one heart. Pretty dry board. Sometimes he'll have a 10, sometimes he'll have pocket eights. But aside from that, he should not be super strong. So when he checks, I bet $380. Would be doing the same thing with aces, kings, and all potential bluffs. My opponent makes the call and we see the four of hearts on the turn. Well, that's about as good as we can hope for with a hand as pathetic as King Six of Hearts. He checks and now it's on me. He's got around $3,000 behind, which is around a pot and a half. So I think the best course of action here is to bet small again and then potentially jam the river. Of course, making a hand would be cool too, but can't count on that. However, I think jamming all in also might be kind of cool. Would do this with aces or kings if I had the chance, trying to get the max from a smaller pocket pair, any non-believing ace high perhaps, like ace queen suited that goes for the hero call. You guys know how it is. Sometimes people just think you're bluffing when you bet really big and they end up calling. Well, that's usually my rationale when I bet huge with a strong hand. And I think doing it with a bad hand makes sense as well for the same reasons. So that's a very long-winded explanation as to why I decided to pull the trigger. All in for 3,000. We don't get snap called, and it seems we are up against exactly what I predicted, which is a hand like pocket jacks, maybe even pocket queens. This is Vegas, after all. People tend to play a little conservatively. And yeah, now it's just time to wait and see what happens. Our fate is in his hands. We could always make top pair on the river if he calls which I presume might be good given the action so far, but definitely rooting for a fold, right? About a minute passes, then two minutes. Now I'm starting to lean towards he's probably going to call. And then in the end, he calls. That is bad news. He asked me how many times I want to run it. I prefer once, but twice is cool too. He agrees on just once. We see the jack of clubs on the river. And King-6 is probably not going to be good enough to win this one, so I just let him know he wins, and he flips over pocket nines. Tough spot for him. Really tough, but he makes the correct call. I think I might have folded in his spot, if I'm being honest, but maybe he's seen enough of my terrible plays on Hustler and decides the hell with it. If he's got it, he's got it. But yeah, he makes the correct decision, and we lose an $8,000 pot. Unnecessarily, you might add, but... Hey, like I said, are you not entertained at the very least? If you're not entertained by watching me play bad hands, how about pocket jacks? That's a real one. Here I raise it up to $60. The button now makes it $220. And like I said, this is Vegas. Already I'm a little concerned with pocket jacks facing a single re-raise. But he's only got a thousand behind, and my image is kind of terrible at this point. 
on this table. So I decide to get it all in there. He's probably willing to call with worse, given that I just bluffed in a big pot. And that's what ends up happening. He calls with pocket nines, so we are off to the races. 2,000 in the middle, we run it once and end up holding. So we get a little bit of a rebate after that king six disaster. In the next fun hand, early position opens to 50, and I defend the straddle with ace eight suited. Flopping top two on ace eight four with two clubs. Plenty of draws available, so when I check and he bets another 50, I go for the check raise right away. Plenty of bad hands to balance this out with. I make it 200. Should have gone a little bit bigger probably, but no time to analyze that because my opponent puts in another raise on the flop. Not something you see a lot. He's in position, so I expected him to just call or fold, but instead he puts in $700. Back on me now, and I know it sounds absurd, but I thought about even putting in another raise because I think he just thinks I'm full of it after the check raise. Most likely assigning me hands like straight draws, flush draws, those sorts of things. And I think we could just get the money in right away, but I decide to keep it normal and just call gambling a little bit that the turn is a brick and we can continue to get money in but instead it's the six of clubs terrible card not necessarily because i expect him to have a better hand now but just because if he's got a hand like ace king for example it's going to be tough to get more money i check and he checks it back river is a six of diamonds and well it's time to bet for value would certainly be betting hands like 9-7 of hearts or 5-3 of hearts, these sorts of hands that might have continued on the flop and now have no showdown value. So I put in $1,100, but he folds right away. Shows me 8-5 of diamonds in the process, though. So an interesting raise from him on the flop to 700. I think it's indicative of the fact that most of these guys at this point probably think I'm playing bad hands all the time. So he's re-raising an 8 on the flop for some protection. But hey... Even I get lucky sometimes, top two in this one. Next, we move on to 10-8 suited. One of my favorite hands for no good reason, really. I straddle to $40, that's essentially a double straddle. Folds around to the small blind who makes it 100 bucks. Pretty small raise out of position. Action's on me now, and I think defending is definitely on the table. It's just a question of do we want to call or re-raise. I decide to go for the re-raise, perhaps thinking that my opponent isn't too strong after raising to just 100 pre-flop. I make it 330. Now he jams for 1200. So there goes my analysis. Maybe he had a bad hand. Nah, just kidding. He's all in for 1200. And I don't know. It's late in the night. It's Vegas. I've had a cocktail. And if he's got two overs like ace king or ace queen, we're live, baby. Our odds are not that bad. We only have to call 900 to win a pot that's over 1600 now or so. How bad could it be? I make the call, so we're off to the races. Flop bottom pair on queen jack eight. We are beating ace king at least, but then the turn is a 10, so we don't even beat ace king now. But now we do beat ace queen and ace jack, for example, maybe even aces and kings. River is an unexpected eight, giving me a full house, looking real good now. And sure enough, he flips over ace king of spades. So we get lucky, win 2400, and felt an opponent in the process. Sorry, bro. Ten high was my weapon of choice this time. Didn't mean to get so violent. And this last hand, ladies and gentlemen, is just an example of how most of the night goes. I get some comments here and there that every single hand is ridiculous, etc. Well, I try to just include the action-packed hands where something funny or interesting happens. But most hands look like this, since you guys are asking. Early position opens to 50. I got pocket kings. I make it 300. He makes the call and we go to a flop which comes down ace high. I think it was ace queen three. I decide to bet small like I would with all my hands and he folds. See, I play poker just like everyone else. Mostly boring, mostly nothing until the random flashes of something cool happening. But aside from that, it's mostly stuff like this. Anyway, I did play one more noteworthy hand so stay tuned for that one which I'll cover in the outro. As always, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the hands. All right, so just finished playing here at the win. It wasn't exactly the most warm welcome to Vegas, but it was at least a little bit of fun. Did end up losing though, I think somewhere like around $2,000. You guys will see the exact number right here. I'm not sure what it was, but uh, there was one more hand where I opened Queens, someone re-raised, 
and I decided to just call. And then the flop came all low cards. I called a bet. The turn was, uh, it paired the lowest card. I called another big bet. And then the river was, it was just a brick, like a blank, let's say a eight or whatever. And uh, the guy jammed all in after I checked and I decided to fold, which is a pretty tough fold for me. That's an over pair, but he ended up showing and he had aces. So uh, it was kind of cool because I saved money, but also not cool because I lost money during the hand. But anyway, in total, I ended up losing like 2K, but we'll have a chance to get it back because the next vlog you guys are gonna see should be from my session coming up in a couple days where I'm playing 5100 at Aria. It's gonna be a big game. Expect at least five figure results one way or the other. But yeah, for all you guys who like Vegas vlogs and stuff like this, leave a like, maybe a comment or something like that that supports the YouTube channel. And until then, I've got nothing else to say. So as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.